my doctor told us a couple weeks ago that in his whole times of doing cervix checks at his office, he's never broken somebody's water while doing it. Obviously, I took that as a challenge. <laughs> home from the hospital last night we got home at around midnight and I'm glad we were home because there were actually a lot of like sleep disturbances in the middle of the night that doesn't that don't usually happen and I'm glad we were home to like deal with that, those things the dog woke up barking and Luke woke up several times it was very yeah, strange because they're strange usually our best sleepers right the, do the dog is like always slept through the whole night and Luke sleeps really well through the night so it was weird I also feel like even though there were disruptions in the night like I slept pretty well from midnight until like five and then at five I <laughs> totally had a panic that I was like I need to go back to the hospital like I was having contractions that woke me up and I could like feel it. They were like three minutes apart. I got up and I brushed my teeth just in case, but I didn't want to wake up Christopher because I, I knew like it had been a long night for him. And then they seemed to lighten up. I took a shower. Um, it's 10, 15 right now in the morning. And I've felt some things like on the drive and I've been feeling things throughout the morning, but nothing obvious just like how I am, where I'm like, I don't know. And today is my official due date. Like, yay, happy due date day. I am 40 weeks pregnant today. Yay. Teddy is officially my second most cooked baby. So Parker's got the title of most um, longest overdue. And Teddy is not officially like overdue, like he's due. But he's not over yet. <laughs> so we'll he's the see. the second baby to reach his due date. Yeah, second baby to reach his due date. I have a feeling he's going to be big. Like, I think he's definitely going to be over nine pounds. Um, Parker was nine pounds, nine ounces. And he measured six pounds, nine ounces roughly at his 36th appointment. Um, Teddy did. But we'll see. Um, Duncan and Jacob were both over eight pounds. So... I, I just, I'm assuming he'll be nine pounds by now. We'll, we'll see. Oh yeah, my pregnancy app today said that he's the size of a pumpkin. So that seems outrageously large. And- Pumpkins come in so many sizes though. I like, know, I know, but still pumpkin. Um, he's the size of a baby, that, that we know for sure. So imagine a pumpkin that's like shaped like a baby and that's the size, okay? <laughs> just say the size of a baby. Why bring a pumpkin into it? And the other really, really cute thing was it said that he's also the size of a Build-A-Bear, teddy bear. And they showed oh, a teddy, a teddy bear. bear. Like, okay, I see what you did there. I was like, oh, teddy. <laughs> anyway, but we'll see, headed to the doctor now. We'll see what he says. I honestly have no idea. Jessica is not having a stress test today, so we don't have to worry about fainting so from that. How you doing? Um, I'm good. I feel like I'm having like almost contraction things again. But the good news is Jessica can get checked here. And since she got checked last night, we'll be able to see if there's any progress happening since last night, which was kind of the question. It's like, since she has contractions so close together so early, it's hard to tell if progress is happening unless there's like a doctor or a nurse to actually check and see if the cervix has opened up at all. The catch to it is then when I do start feeling like a lot of pain, it's usually when I'm like 10 centimeters dilated and ready to push. So it's like complicated knowing when I need to be at the hospital just because I, I don't want to miss the window when I'm supposed to be there, even though I feel like usually okay going into it. And since there's no kids here, I get to sit in the little, <laughs> the little nook. So I'm in this little, look this. Oh, you got the curtain. I'm, I'm in, in the and changing room. I can yell at you to stop touching the curtain. Oh, yes. Don't Sorry. break it. Sorry. <laughs> Don't hang on the curtains. Don't hang on the curtains. Oh, I've also been wanting to mention for a while that my doctor told us a couple weeks ago that in his whole times of doing cervix checks at his office, he's never broken somebody's water while doing it. And, it, and like, obviously I took that as a challenge. <laughs> like, that's where my brain goes. So I've been kind of secretly like hoping to but he was like, and thankfully, because I, you know, that would really mess up my office. And 
which I don't want to do. Like, obviously, I don't want to mess up his office, but I'm like, I think I'm chaotic good a little bit here. And um, I definitely <laughs> want to win that award. I, I really want to get that challenge. So that's kind of what's going through my brain right now, casually. Worst news of the day is that my water did not break at my doctor's office. <laughs> I feel like that might have been my last chance. <laughs> to become champion water breaker at my doctor's office. Also, in other news, I haven't had a lot of change from last night. There are some things that are like maybe, like the baby's head seems like it's lower. The cervix is like lower too or something. So it was, he said it was like one position and now it's another position. So, um, and it definitely I think was the other position last night. So that's some change he said he could stretch me to a three which i think is more than last night too but just like a little bit i told him to give me a real good stretch and sweep i was like you just go for it in there <laughs> so um mess around mess around. Just mess around he was like i think the baby's gonna come in the next few days or like today he was like it could totally happen but if you want i can also schedule for you for an induction for the weekend and I don't know. I didn't do that. I set up an appointment with him for Friday. So I was kind of like, we'll see. Like, I don't feel desperate enough for an induction, but I also get the reasoning behind it where it's just like, I can't tell that I'm in labor. So it like makes sense to just like be like, no, just start your labor. <laughs> and the doctor didn't seem to have an opinion either way. Right. Like he was like, whatever you want. He was like, here the, here the, here's like the thing that might help, but like do whatever you want. So I was like, yeah, I'll wait it out. But then I also intentionally scheduled for Friday just in case at that point I was like, okay, yeah, actually let's do an induction or just wanted to know what was going on. And I'm not like adamantly opposed to an induction or anything. It might happen, but I think I would want it more like next week, but we'll see. Or maybe this weekend. I don't know. There was one more thing I totally want to remember because it was so cute. But the doctor was checking me and he was like kind of doing the sweep and trying to see where like baby's head was and stuff like that. And Teddy like went in reverse. Like all of a sudden like his bottom is here and his bottom started like coming up. There's like, he was like, mur, mur. <laughs> he was just like, you cannot take me. <laughs> like, it was so funny. It was like he was running away. He was like, no, I'm shutting this down. I'm not going out there. No way. So anyway, that was cracking me up during the check. Like, I've never had that happen before. Like, I don't think the doctor could have pushed on him in a way to make that happen. <laughs> like, he was just like, no. <laughs> I am going back up. Like, leave me alone. So we just got home, and of course, I'm feeling like stronger-ish contractions, which was probably brought on by the doctor checking me and doing the sweep and everything. So yeah, so I am feeling things. We had traffic on the way home, and I was kind of like, huh, what, what if I what if I get into a birth in the car situation? I don't know. I think I'm gonna go do that mile circuit again with my exercise buddy. <laughs> and see if we can get things like to keep going in the direction of baby coming out. Uh, I have a question. How many question? centimeters dilated are you? Um, he said he could stretch me to a three. So you're three centimeters dilated? Maybe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm going to go upstairs and we'll see if anything seems like it's progressing and if I need to go back in again. <laughs> Like, I feel so lame just not knowing. And that's the reason why my doctor suggested that I could induce over the weekend if I needed to. Just because he was like, you're just going to be coming back and forth to the hospital like a million times because you, you don't know. So, like, Eddie didn't say it like that. Like, he wasn't being, he wasn't like that at all. But um, that's me saying it briefly. Like, he's just kind of like, he was like to alleviate the stress of like having to go back and forth. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. All right, we're all back at the house, waiting for Jessica to give birth and also doing this. <laughs> I got my birthy bros with me. Day two and a half in their brother shirts. Now this might have done something yesterday, but I didn't produce a baby, so. No, but I do think it does something. And I also feel like it alleviates a lot of pain from my hips and stuff. Oh, that's really good. That's so, the main thing. Yeah, I mean, the doctor said that he dropped a little bit and it, the cervix was starting to come down or something. And I think that is probably from 
this. If you don't know what's going on here, don't, don't worry, that's all right. It's, <laughs> It's it's a pregnancy thing, uh, but we explain it in detail in past vlogs, so you can watch those. But yeah. they're basically doing these exercises that all that tend to help babies get into position and and possibly even start up the labor I, process. I don't, think it, I don't know that it's supposed to start up labor, but I think like once you're kind of in like early stages of labor, it can kind of speed things along. How's it doing for your labor, Jake? <laughs> It's going good. My water's breaking. I hope I, I can feel something in there. Maybe oh. it's just that I'm hungry. But oh yes. Yeah. All right. It is 4:55 p.m. and Jacob's making dinner for him and the other boys. What are you making this evening? Enchiladas. Enchiladas. Oh. Ooh, look at the cheesy, gooey goodness. Did you get some enchilada? Mm enchilada. Mm yeah. Yeah. You gonna eat some? How's it taste? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Good? <laughs> that thumbs up from you? Yeah. What do you think of your creation today, Jacob? Really good. And then after last night, we went to the hospital. We stayed there till around midnight. Not, It wasn't too late, but I, I started thinking that if we needed to wake up, super late at night or in the wee hours of the morning and I needed to, to drive Jessica to the hospital, I would need something to wake me up. So I'm gonna make some coffee and put it in the refrigerator and that way I'll have iced coffee for the drive to the hospital if I have to do that late at night. So I'm just gonna make myself some coffee right now and, uh, and just put it away for later. I'm gonna make it and not drink it. Which is good. It's gonna honestly, that's gonna be hard for me, because when you smell the coffee, you want to drink the coffee. But I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna save it for later. There we go. Emergency supply of coffee. It is 9.30, everyone, including Jessica, I think, is asleep, aside from me. I'm obviously awake. I'm kind of constantly in a state of half asleep, half awake, I feel like, lately. But, um, but yeah, more awake than asleep right now. I'm just going around turning off lights, making sure everything's cool at the house. No baby yet. But I have coffee in the fridge if, if I need it, I guess. We'll just keep going like this until there's a baby. But um, thanks for watching today. I'm glad you can make it. And we will see you next time. <laughs>